let's take a step into the mining garage. Yeah. So in here, you may notice the sound of multiple mining rigs. True. And there are some ridiculous miners on the shelf that we just got in, like the Gold Shell KD6, which is making the blunt of this noise. That is a crazy miner that mines over 100 bucks a day. But people know that, they understand that, and that thing carries a pretty crazy premium. But right next to it is a quiet mining rig that mines a cryptocurrency that many people don't even know about or have forgotten about. That means that, one, the miner is gonna be cheaper. Furthermore, it's a profitable mining rig and it has pretty good availability. So today we're gonna be reviewing the Bitmain Antminer DR5 that mines Decred and give you some information that you need to know whether you own one now or you're gonna buy one or thinking about buying one, whatever. This is some critical, vital information. Enough talk. Let's admire some modern machinery. Hey, <laughs> awkward. My name's Vosk. You're on the Voskcoin YouTube channel. Spoiler? Disclaimer? Disclosure? Yeah, uh, looking for the button to click. I love mining. It's in the background. And getting started with mining is incredibly easy and it's really rewarding. It's a lot of fun and uh, to be honest, it's very profitable. So I've, I've got a video guide on how to set up an ASIC miner in, in heavy detail. I have a video guide on how to set up electricity, start mining out of your home, or you could do this with say like build your own shed mining farm like we've done before, among many other options. Basically mine efficiently, mine safely. Today is the simple fact that you just need to have proper electric set up, preferably 220 to 240 volt with a nice PDU and a power cable. Psh, you plug this right into the DR5. Okay, then you plug in an ethernet cable, which gives it internet access, and then you're able to remotely access the miner. You can log into your router and see all the devices on your network. That's what I personally do. Or you can download a free app to scan the devices on your network. Something like Fing I used last week, uh, setting up a, a miner at a family member's house. Really the next thing then, if you decide that you kind of into this, you want to get into it, is what miner? And that's really the purpose of today's video. So this is me logged into the miner. Um, you know, I, I got the IP address, I punched it into my browser. I do all this on the computer normally, but I, you can also do it on your phone. So you just plug it into any browser and you're connected to the same local network, basically the same Wi-Fi, right? Uh, and then from there, you put in the password and the, the username. So that's just root, root. And that's the standard default on every ant miner. From there, you put in whatever mining pool you want. You know, I use F2 pool as one of my pool options. They're just reliable. And so for example, I'll drop this down in the video description below, but you know, you can just punch this in and then you need to get a decred address. You can just punch your decred address in. Do not do a dot then to put a worker name because I just realized what I did. I put dot. Oh. This had dot dot worker name. So here, let me show you this page. You can see the uptime here. It's been up for about five days. Uh, it will, that uptime will reset when I fix this. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that and save and apply. So that's how you do it. Passwords don't matter in this era of mining. They used to matter a little bit, now they don't. So we can see on this screen, we can see that first one says dead. It's because I'm super genius and I've got dot worker name, dot worker name. So that's how it works. That's your wallet address, dot worker name with mining pools that don't require you to use a username. But I also put a backup pool just as the same thing with no worker name. And so I was mining off of my backup pool here, which is totally fine. Um, and it's always good to put in backup pools in case this one goes down or anything like that. But we can see, you know, what it's reporting here is the hash rate and, you know, kind of what the accepted shares are, what our rejection rate is, what the status is of the ASIC chips, all looking good. That's what the zeros, the little O's, that's a good thing. You want little O's. And we see you know, the frequency, the temps, hardware errors, which is HW and basically, Good. Pulling up the miner's performance here on the mining pool, we can see that the hash rate has been steady here, right? So it has no worker name because I did that wrong. So then it just had the backup that didn't have a dot worker name supplied. 
And from there, you can see we're getting pretty steady performance going from 25, 22, 21, 26, hit a peak over here, 28, right? And all that matters is your performance on the mining pool. That's what you get paid off of. So just make sure you fully understand that. This miner is supposed to be earning about 15 bucks a day. And at a residential electric rate of about 10 cents per kilowatt hour, you'll be pulling about $11 per the mining profitability calculator. It technically mines the Blake 256R14. Yeah, say that 100 times in a row. Okay, at 35 terahash a second. However, if you've been paying attention, you may just be like, wait, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. You said we were getting these numbers and, and then like, you know, high of 28 on the pool, but that's much less than 35 now, isn't it? Okay, so here's a fun fact. If you don't know, very simple. So gigahash a second is less than terahash a second. And basically you just divide it by 1000 and you get terahash. So this is reporting 23.5 terahash a second, but it reads in gigahash here, just, you know, in case you didn't know that. The model number here is the Antminer DR5. And so then you start to wonder were there other DR5 models that had less hash rate? Well, there's the DR5 34 terahash a second, and there's the DR5 35 terahash a second. Looking at our model, we have this unit. We have the DR5 35 terahash a second. And you're running some basic math here we can see that if we're supposed to get 35 terahash a second and we divide it by three, so let's assume we have three hash boards, we're getting about 11.6 terahash, or basically mining power, right, per hash board. Hash board is basically a collection of all these little ASIC chips. They lay these under these big green boards normally, and they slot them into the machine. So you have one, two, three. And if you had a fourth, well, you'd be going up by 25%, or I guess at that point, you'd have a 33% increase on your uh, mining power. And when we run those numbers like that, we see pretty similar numbers down here from the hash boards as chain one and two, right? And now, where is number three? And you may have noticed earlier this video, I said that Bitmain ant miners are pretty good, they're pretty reliable. But this is a used miner we, that we received, and this used miner has clearly had this sh beaten out of it. I mean, look at it. I've had miners for many years, and I've run some of them in what I think of as pretty rough environments, but this poor guy looks like he was chucked across the room, then they lit him on fire, but extinguished him real quick to make sure he didn't actually burn up. They just wanted to singe the poor boy. Well. Yeah, welcome to the life of some unfortunate mining farms that just beat them about a rig somehow. I haven't opened this device yet. I just wanted to kind of let it run and get some base numbers here. But the takeaway is simple. I am missing a hash board or it is broken. It's not even reporting that it exists. It's not like it has chain three and it's an errors and it's offline or whatever else. We're missing a hash board in a device that, to my knowledge, was never sold with just two hash boards so this is going to start to get pretty obvious right we're missing a third of our hash power so we're probably going to make a third less but the, you know the electricity bill will be probably marginally smaller but what are the numbers right so i've been mining about 0.145 dcr decredit day which is up six percent today so that's great decred is the 104th biggest cryptocurrency when ranked by coin market cap right now that means i'm pulling about ten dollars a day in mining profits if we take the expected expense here of this mining rig we'd be spending about four dollars a day in electricity you could maybe estimate we're spending a third less because we're mining a third less a quick overview of Decred, it's community-directed superior store of value. That's how it pitch, pitches themselves. They are an older project. They claim to employ an innovative hybrid proof-of-work, proof-of-stake system that layers security and carefully aligns incentives. The system yields the best of both worlds, making it an order of magnitude more expensive to attack than a peer proof-of-work or peer proof-of-stake network. The big thing with Decred has always been their governance, right? And I'll talk about that more here shortly. But basically, Decred is an old coin. When you look at their tagline, it, it sounds boring. You don't really know what Decred does. And in my opinion, especially in this era, it's not enough to just exist and not be a scam. It, it's boring. It doesn't hook me. And we all click off, 
right um and so i'm not trying to sound like a hater i like coins that are mineable and i like coins that are half decent at all normally so you know i hope that decred does find a new level of success but i can tell you that decred did hit an all-time high over the last year at 247 dollars a coin but it's down 72 percent from them most coins are down significantly but a key thing I want to take away is with this all-time high that's tracked per coin gecko is that this was very short-lived and they really only found major price appreciation from January 21 to about September of 21, right? And there's a lot of fluctuation within there. Most cryptocurrencies were going up then as well. However, they have seemed to have found a new bottom since those new highs. A key thing to note though is that they have lost significant ground against Bitcoin. So that's going to be the orange chart here. And in the previous cycle, huge, huge gains against Bitcoin in comparison. This is also, I will note, a common trend with many cryptocurrencies. However, there are some major cryptocurrencies that did not suffer as greatly when you zoom out and compare it against Bitcoin. You can see that Ethereum trading against Bitcoin, previous bull run, or I should say two bull runs ago, now that's sad. And then the you know most recent bull run, Ethereum spiked down, spike, and then found a new low, but it has been trending upward against Bitcoin because it just, it, it trades very well and it's down not nearly as much from its all time high, only 35%. But this is not a technical analysis channel where we just make up a bunch of bullshit, say buy my course and use my Bybit link so you can get shorted and I'll make a ton of money. Hello, technical analysis content creation so the big thing about decred is their whole governance thing right and they've got some good docs we look at their issuance so proof of work miners every five minutes new block and when this happens 60 percent goes to proof of work miner who found the block so 60 percent of every block reward goes to the actual miners 30 percent goes to proof of stake voters on that block six percent to each of the five voters ten percent goes to the decred treasury and the issue has been changing over the years because this project is what over six years old at this point and it's gonna keep pushing forward how many coins miners are receiving per block has fallen pretty dramatically in the recent blocks and just timeline verse obviously earlier and that is part of their mechanism of just reducing their emissions and eventually they will have their last block mined and there will be no more decred created in the spirit say right of bitcoin so you know again you know the, this decred is the whole governance coin right so here's what you need to know this is uh not very talked about in the mining space. There's not a lot of interest in decred mining, partially due to the ASIC miners that have been produced for their network. It's a pretty deep, you know, we, really could, we could really be very elaborate here, but I'm gonna give you the short version and you can research more. Let me know down in the comments if you prefer us to create a longer version here on, on the tube. So basically Taco Revenge is getting his revenge on miners. On-chain data they uncovered in relation to ongoing price suppression in decred markets basically concluding that proof of work for short POW as it currently exists in the context of Decred is a rigged game. And here are the key reasons they want to note in this proposal. It's difficult and possible to source recent Decred ASICs, even at an artificially high price, meaning there's an effective monopoly on the supply of ASICs. And then there's market data and on-chain data suggesting that mining is controlled by a very small number of large entities. And they're actively suppressing the price, AKA dumping. Competing with existing manufacturers requires substantial capital expenditures, tens of millions of dollars. It's generally accepted it takes about a year to develop an ASIC miner. That's the rough number, especially for a new potential manufacturer. Competing with existing miners is prohibitively difficult. From an infrastructure perspective, you gotta have a lot of a cheap electricity, purpose-built uh, facilities. And you know, that could definitely be true to an extent, right? So like, say if Goldshell made a new efficient Decred chip and they put it in their box miners, then maybe this could be a little bit of a different story, but no one's doing that. The, the interest isn't there, the costs aren't there, the expertise maybe aren't there as well, right? So there's a lot of research and development that goes into developing an ASIC miner for a new mining algorithm, one that they haven't done before. Once they get it figured out, then it's just a matter of doing it better which is obviously gonna be an easier thing than that initial breakthrough. So here's the big deal. The change would be from proof of work, proof of stake and treasury split, 60, 30, 10 to 10, 80, 10. 
So becoming a Decred staker and participating in their network and governance becomes much more lucrative and mining is gonna be crushed. This is in development. Like you understand, like this this is published half a year ago. The voting ended almost half a year ago. It was substantially approved. So this is happening. Decred in a way was like an early DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, which DAOs are all the rage. Now DAOs aren't even DAOs anymore. Now how ironic is that? I've always thought Decred was super interesting. I think it's sad that it's gone this way. I really don't blame them given the situation. I think there could have been different efforts to be made. Uh, but you know, nobody really talks about Decred in this era. Nobody really uses Decred. And I'm just not really sure on the use case for Decred. Again, I, I wish them success. I, I hope that they do well. Uh, I'm not trying to come off super negative and, and a hater here. I'm just being honest and, and keeping it real. No one's gonna develop any miners ever again as far, unless Decred goes on a freaking rip in price. And, and you know maybe it becomes lucrative even if it's just 10 percent of the block reward right when you go over to bitmain site you don't see anything about decred right we've got litecoin dogecoin script miner obviously bitcoin miners more bitcoin miners more bitcoin miners then you have a zcash equihash asic miner and this little tiny bubble for the amp miner uh, d7 which is a dash miner we click on more products and so we start scrolling around through here and it's the same we were just looking at. So you're like, why are you doing this? You click on Blake 256 R14 and they don't even show anything. You click show sold out products and they don't even show anything. They don't love Decred and Decred doesn't love them back. So what if we hit the second hand market, right? What if we punch in the Ant Miner DR5? Ant Miner DR5 listed out here six thousand dollars four thousand dollars two thousand dollars but here's an interesting note only one of three hash boards working in this device right two out of three hash boards working in this device I'll link out to ebay too we have an affiliate link with that so basically if you like the video at all please buy through our links to support the channel and uh you know that's that's all that's all i can ask for it's that's huge support um when you guys do that as always i'm not here to shill stuff and push it on you you know, you only buy this thing if you want to. I think the unfortunate thing here is that these miners are getting older. They're beat up. Unfortunately, especially with altcoin miners, a lot of stuff is really rushed to market. A lot of it can be like new, right? It's like in the first model year of a new car. You're all excited. You feel real cool. And then the shit breaks and you're like, is this a warranty? And they're like, <laughs> no, not anymore. You didn't get your oil changed here, buddy. So as far as, you know, is the DR5 worth it? I mean, definitely cool if you can get one with three working hash boards. It's absolutely a profitable miner. Um, it's not too loud. It doesn't, it's not super power hungry, right? It's definitely easier to deploy multiple units instead of getting like these big Bitcoin miners that consume over 3000 watts. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is a crazy amount of electric I've got to pull. In comparison, you could almost fit in three at least. Once some of these hash boards go down, well, definitely three of them because they're only pulling about 1600 watts if all the boards are working. I can't say I recommend the miner, you know, the one I got's kind of beat up and, and in rough shape. And again, that's the thing you deal with with used farms. Um, you know, they buy these by the pallet and a lot of mining farms don't take care of their equipment. Buying used hardware is a big risk. You'd be ridiculous to think you're gonna get any service from Bitmain. You're lucky to get support and service from Bitmain if the miner is new. I hope you understand that. And that unfortunate low level of customer service is the standard across the board with ASIC miner manufacturers still. It's always been like that. And it's still bad. I'm just wondering when it's gonna get better. That's why a lot of us are cheering for Intel to drop a Bitcoin mining ASIC chip, maybe actually finally give us a standard level of customer support. You have an issue with your iPhone, you walk into Apple, if you recently got it, boom, new one. Right? I'm not saying the repairs aren't expensive if you fall out of that warranty, whatever. But my point is, is that there's no one even close to Apple. We can't even get the Best Buy 14 day return policy going. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see where it all goes. Can't say I recommend it. Interesting nonetheless. Sad to see a project moving away from proof of work, but that is what happens when miners don't support the project. It's a reoccurring theme. You don't see projects launching on proof of work mining anymore because we kind of live in an era of 
way too many miners are, are acting like leeches. These industrialized mining farms are cash businesses with cash backers that don't give a fuck about this coin. They want to get a bunch of miners. They want to make a bunch of money. And that, that's kind of it. So I'm not trying to sound negative or gloomy. You know, there are a lot of projects that are still really profitable to mine that would substantially lose value if they moved away from mining. I don't think that's going to be really the case here for Decred, though, in comparison. Um, when I think of that, I think of coins like Bitcoin and Dogecoin and Litecoin and so forth. Uh, but then there are some projects that are taking a stand and, and being bold. Like Kadena's like, hey, we're going to be a scalable proof of work network. And then there's Nervos Network, CKB. And they're like, hey, we're going to support miners. We're going to stay mineable. I, I, they're like, hey, like we are not moving away from mining. I'm like, that's really cool. Way to take a stance. I'm excited. Let's see where it goes. So only other thing I want to see where it goes is your finger. Settle down. Not being creepy. You're supposed to be taking it to the mouse. Psh, click that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know what uh, mining rig you want us to give away soon. We got a couple miners coming in that we're going to give away some of them. And uh, let me know which one you want and why and what you would do with it. And I'm especially interested if you'd be able to give anything back to that ecosystem that you're gonna be mining. As always, thanks for watching. We upload daily. I'll see you tomorrow. Is that the cutest pup? Is that our CMO right there? Hi, Tails. Hey, puppy. Our chief mining officer. <laughs> Are you a good girl? Are you a good girl? Are you photobombing me? Are you video bombing me?